What's up guys? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm James and this is Clearwater Fishing and today I am offering you guys a Hummingbird Helix buying guide. We're going to step through the size ranges, the price ranges, the features. I'm going to explain all that to you guys and hopefully guide you to a fish finder that you'll know and love for many years to come. Hey guys, if you haven't already, right now is a great time to subscribe to the channel. We do all sorts of fishing related videos from fishing guides to fishing challenges to technology reviews to bait reviews to rod and reel and first impressions, all that kind of stuff. If you think about it, we can do it right here on this channel. So make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. So if you guys are here, you're probably trying to make up your mind on whether or not you want to buy the Humminbird Helix or if you're just trying to actually look for someone to help you pick out some of the features that you may or may not want and help you buy the best Humminbird Helix that you possibly can with your money. But first I want to talk about a few of the key differences for Humminbird to me that make them you know, one of the top tier fish finders. First, I want to talk about their mapping systems. Humminbird makes their own maps and they make really great detailed maps. I've looked at some of the, the maps out there and some of them are okay, but Humminbird is definitely a step above in my opinion as far as mapping goes and the contours on a lake. Being able to find those key spots to, to fish, especially in the summertime when you're offshore fishing, that kind of thing, great mapping system so if you haven't made up your mind definitely look at their mapping system and check that out the next great thing about hummingbird is that they typically offer most if not all of the best features even in their lowest priced units which is fantastic for us so we get more for our money now that's not always the case as you'll see when we go through the guide but you're going to be able to get a majority of those features even at the lower price points and really provide yourself a really solid foundation for building either your boat network or however you see your fishing future on your boat. The last thing I want to talk about is the Humminbird Helix is the third tier in Humminbird's family of fish finders. It is the lowest tier. Uh, but that is not a bad thing since the comment I just made before. Uh, they do provide a lot of good quality features in their lowest unit. You're just not going to get those top tier features like a touch screen uh, and that kind of thing. You're, you're going to have to deal with a, a little keypad and, and find your points on your menus and that kind of thing. Just a little more manually. But if it's good enough for Kevin Van Dam, it's probably good enough for me and you. So let's kick the party off with the Humminbird Helix, the five and seven inch models. Uh, these two are viewed as the smallest models because well, they are the smallest models. Uh, five and seven inches are no longer gonna be continued in the fourth generation. Uh, they might be later on, but right now, as the time of this making this video, uh, they're not even listed on Humminbird's website. So, you're gonna to have to deal with a generation three or even a generation two Helix five or seven. Uh, these guys price anywhere from $200 all the way to $800, depending on the screen size and the features available. So if you're kind of looking in this range, hey, this is uh, probably the ticket for you. So you can uh, buy a solid fish finder in, in this price range. The first feature I wanna talk about is the mega side imaging. So if you buy a unit that has mega site imaging, you're gonna have a unit that has mega down imaging. It's gonna have chirp. It's also gonna have the GPS functions. So when you buy mega site imaging, you're buying all those features below it as well. Now for mega site imaging, I recommend buying it for the transom of your boat. If uh, that's what you're gonna do, you're gonna be sitting at the console or maybe uh, even, even at the back with a tiller. Hey, that's fine too. Uh, that way you can watch that stuff as you drive straight. The key to this is, is you don't want to be driving and then turning the transducer all of a sudden, and that's, that's just gonna distort the image and not provide a solid quality image. So if you're buying SI, you really are buying it for the transom. I wanna show you guys a quick image of the Mega SI image. Now this is not the Mega SI Plus, 
Uh, it's not available on five and seven inch units. You're gonna be able to buy the Mega SI, which is 1.075 megahertz to 1.15 megahertz. So that's the range of frequency you're gonna get. And what exactly does that mean? Well, it means that you're gonna be getting a little more detail, a little crisper image than a normal side imaging or down imaging unit. Uh, I'll show you a quick comparison between the two. I'll throw it up here. As you can tell, and I know they're a little different in the images, but that's okay. I just want you guys to see the crispness that you're seeing on the mega versus the non-mega. And that's just really the difference in frequencies. So maybe uh, you're not exactly buying for the transom. Maybe you're buying something for your trolling motor. Well, in that case, I would probably recommend the Mega DI. Now, same scenario here. Uh, the megahertz is 1.075 to 1.15. So you're still dealing with the same frequency. You're just not dealing with the width of going out and being able to search. Now, that's really key uh, if you're on the transom, but if you're on the trolling motor, you're moving too much, you're turning that head, you're making all sorts of moves. It's just not gonna give you a good quality image if you're doing SI there. It just makes sense to do DI. And like I just said earlier, if you buy the Mega DI, you're getting all the features below it. You're gonna get the chirp function and you're gonna get GPS and mapping and that kind of thing. And lastly, you can buy just with a chirp function where you're just able to see the 2D sonar and have a GPS map as well. So if that's kind of your key and you're like, hey, I don't really need the mega imaging. I just need to know my depth and see a few structure pieces and I'm good to go. Uh, then go down to the chirp and the GPS. You can get you some waypoints. That way you can find those areas quickly and easily the next time you're there. And the very last thing I want to talk about in this area is networking versus non-networking. Since Mega, Mega Live Imaging is not going to be working with this class, uh, it's not really super important for you to buy a networking unit unless you actually do plan on making a boat network between your console and your bow. Then, then you're going to want to make sure you buy the networking system, the G3N. Uh, make sure you buy that if that's what your goal is. And if it's not, if you want a single standalone unit, make sure you just buy the G3 or the G2. Our next grouping here is the 8 to 10 inch sizes. So here, our ranges of price are considerably larger from $700 all the way to a whopping $2,000. So a $2,000 price mark may be a little intimidating, so don't get too flustered at this point. But if you're looking in that price range and you find yourself, hey, I actually wanted the $1,500 one, but I only have $1,200, well, it may be worth saving up a few more months uh, and get that $1,500 one versus the $1,200 one. So just keep that in mind as we go through this. So the eight through 10 sizes actually has three sizes in it. So we have the eight inch helix, the nine inch helix, and the 10 inch helix. So you have three different sizes to choose from and all of them in generation four are networked. You don't have to worry about buying a non-networked unit and thinking that you can network with it or use Mega Live with it. In this case, uh, you don't have to worry about that. So in fact, Mega Live Imaging should be compatible with every one of these units in this size range that has Mega Imaging. So that's gonna be the Mega DI Plus or the Mega SI Plus. At least that's what Hummingbird is telling us. This is also the very first size that is compatible with Mega 360. First of all, let's talk about what Mega 360 is. It is essentially a side imaging unit that rotates. Now, remember how I told you guys earlier that having a side imaging on your trolling motor was a bad idea? Well, they took that idea and made it a good idea and made a controlled rotational unit and a program to decipher that data. And you get an image like this. So you're able to see all around the boat and determine uh, what's around you. Uh, sometimes you can see fish in really good detail, but other times you're just looking for specific 
targets to cast at and see if there's a fish in the vicinity. Now remember Mega 360 is not compatible with all of these units in this size range. You must have for the Helix 8, it must be a Mega SI Plus unit. And for the Helix 9s, it should be a Mega DI Plus or a Mega SI Plus. And for the Helix 10s, it's the same thing, the Mega DI Plus or the Mega SI Plus. And since we're talking about Mega DI and Mega SI Plus, let's just go ahead and talk about that feature real quick. We've already talked a little bit about side imaging, down imaging, and I'm not gonna repeat myself there. That still applies from the first part of this video on where you wanna mount those and how you wanna strategize to use those. But I wanna talk about the specific technology and how it differs from mega side imaging and mega down imaging. What does the plus actually do for us? Well, Hummingbird actually kind of went back and reinvented, well, used some of their old technology and kind of applied it to the, some of the newer stuff. They wanted to apply chirp sonar to this system and provide even higher quality images along with using a little bit higher frequency. They're using 1.2 megahertz uh, in a chirp frequency, which if you don't know what chirp is, it's just using a band of frequencies to determine uh, what's down below you and they have a special way of interpreting that image and providing even more detail, a crisper image and where you don't miss anything down there. So like if there's a fish down there, it'll actually give you a return because you're using a wider band of frequencies. That explains kind of what the plus is. You're less likely to miss small details such as fish and that kind of thing, but you're still gonna get the high quality image that mega down imaging and side imaging provide. Um, I'm gonna to try to show a example of this right here, see if we can see the difference. And if you can't, well, that's okay. Uh, maybe maybe there's not too much of a big difference. I know they worked really hard on the technology, but just wanted to show it to you guys and let you guys make your own interpretation whether or not it's better or not. And once again, uh, just like in the previous segment, if you buy the Mega SI Plus, you're gonna get the DI Plus, you're gonna get the normal chirp sonar, the 2D sonar, you're gonna have GPS, in the same way with the DI, you're gonna get everything below it, just like in the previous segment. So remember, if you buy one of those, you're getting all those functions below. Now in this size range, there is a couple things that may not make sense to us. Uh, if you look online, like at Hummingbird's website, they have this version called CHO. Well, that's control head only. So you're not getting the transducer. And you may be thinking, why would I just, why would I buy one without a transducer? Well, for some people, they want a, maybe a second one at their console. They don't need to buy another transducer. So they're just gonna buy the control head only and network it in with their other one. So that way they're all communicating and transferring images. So if, say you wanted down imaging on this one and you have side imaging on this one, or maybe you want a map on this one and side imaging and you're just trying to make sure you're going over your waypoints uh, that you're looking for fish at and seeing if there's areas that you may want to target or maybe you're just searching for new things. I don't know. But either way, there's people who want two of them up there. Uh, actually, I would love to have two of them up there, but I, I, we're all not made of money. So those of us who are blessed enough, we can have two up there and do that kind of thing with. So that's a reason why you would want to buy the control head only. And also, if you're looking to save some money, say you're looking to buy a second one, well, maybe you don't need to buy the SI unit. Maybe you just need to buy the DI unit. That'll save you, save you some money. Or maybe you just want some 2D sonar where it'll just do 2D sonar or it'll do the mapping. And you just wanna do all the SI and DI stuff on this one. That'll save you some money down the road as well. So if you're looking to do map versus SI and DI, that's great. You could spend a little less money on this unit and have a, the higher end unit over here and still be able to transfer waypoints and that kind of thing between the two. Now we're down to our final size range, the 11 to 15 inch range of the Humminbird Helix. 
Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys here. You're not buying really any more features anymore. You're buying size. And just to explain it to you guys, the ranges here are $1,900 all the way to $3,000. And there's only one unit that has just the sonar, the 2D sonar on it, and that's the Helix 12. Everything else you're going to be picking from the Mega DI Plus or the Mega SI Plus, whether or not it's in the 12 inch or the 15 inch version. That's all you have there. You only really get eight options here. You get some control head unit only versions as well, but really you're buying Mega DI or Mega SI, and then you have one option for the 2D sonar. So you're really, really just buying the size here. You're not getting any more features. It's still gonna be compatible with Mega Live Imaging. It's going to be compatible with the Mega 360, and you're gonna be able to network all of them together because, well, they're all network compatible. So the price range here difference is mostly size and a little bit on the features. So as far as DI versus SI, obviously SI is gonna cost you more. We already talked about those and kind of the differences there. Really, if you're jumping up to this size and you're looking to spend between $1,800 and $3,000 on a single fish finder, I may encourage you to step down and maybe get two, uh, mainly just to save you a few hundred bucks and you can have two 10 inch ones uh, instead of buying a single 15. I just really wanted to point that out just in case uh, you didn't think of that. Instead of buying a single Humongo unit, you can buy two medium sized units and have two different displays doing two different things. Now that's up to you guys if you want to do that or not, but hey, just an idea. I hope this video helped you guys kind of work yourself through some of the features, some of the price points. I know I didn't specifically talk about any single unit. In fact, if you're going to ask me uh, what unit to buy, if I could only buy one unit, I would probably buy the Helix 12, the Mega SI Plus, and have that at the console and have the transducer obviously mounted at the transom. I think that's probably one of the best options you could find. You could easily, you know, do the waypoints and that kind of thing, and eventually, you know, spend some money for a bow one and network those two together and easily be able to find stuff with your SI unit and mark it, make a waypoint, transfer that waypoint to the bow, and then travel to that waypoint using the trolling motor and fish that waypoint. I think that's one of the most critical features about having a network system instead of, that, instead of having a hodgepodge system. If I was doing it, that's kind of how I would start. I would start with the console unit and then move to the bow. Some people may feel differently, but that's just my opinion. But the Humminbird Helix overall is a fantastic unit. And if you're looking at it, you're obviously, well, I think in the right place on this video. But thank you guys so much for watching. If I missed any details and you have any questions, ask them below in the comments. And if you know some, some information that I didn't cover in here, please let, let everybody know in the comments below. Uh, I'm sure everyone here wants to, to learn more and become better with their fish finders. But just like always, until next time, get out there and go catch you some fish.